I know exactly what you're thinking, I know how to draw a mask so I don't need to watch this video. But actually this video is more about how to do Roto as efficiently as possible, to minimise the amount of work you have to do and spend more time doing the creative stuff that's more fun. So the absolute basics of rotoscoping in Nuke. First of all press O to add a Roto node. We're almost there. Then once you've added the Roto node you can start drawing a mask, so if you start clicking you can add points like this. It's usually good practice to keep the shapes as simple as possible. When I'm going around these curves I'm going to add a few extra ones, but for the most part it's trying to keep the shapes nice and simple. Once you've created a shape you can press Ctrl A or Command A if you're on a Mac to select everything, and then if you start pressing Z you can see it's going to start to smooth out the curves. So you can get it to a point where it looks pretty good and then obviously go in and refine it as well. When you click on one of the points the control handles will appear much like other software and you can just use them to refine the shape of the Roto. And now if I look at the Roto and I hit A, you can see we have an alpha channel for the guitar pick. The next thing I would want to do is probably create some secondary masks to remove my fingers from this Roto. So obviously they're overlapping with the guitar pick slightly. So just for good practice, I'm going to name this Roto guitar pick. And then I'm going to press O again to create a second one. And I'm going to set the name of this one to be fingers. And then I can draw some masks for the fingers. And now if I look at the fingers Roto and press A to look at the alpha channel, I have some Roto for the fingers and the guitar pick separately. In Nuke there's lots of different ways you can basically take away Roto from another piece of Roto, but the way that I like to do it is to use a merge node. So I'm going to press M, which is the shortcut to add a merge node. Then I'm going to connect the B input to the guitar pick, because this is behind the fingers here. And then I'm going to connect the A input to the fingers Roto. So now if I look at the merge node and I press A, we can see we have both of the alphas combined. And then what I want to do is change the operation from over to stencil, which is then going to cut out the fingers. Then what I can do is use this guitar pick alpha to cut out the guitar pick from the footage. So I'm going to add another merge node by pressing M. This time the background image is going to be the actual footage that I used originally and the A input is going to go to the alpha of the guitar pick. And now if I look at this and go back into the RGB channel you can see it's overlaying the alpha on top of the footage. But obviously this isn't what I want so what I had to do again is change the merge operation to something else and in this case I'm going to set it to mask. And what mask does is say everything outside of the alpha channel just make it black. And now as you can see we have the guitar pick isolated. At this point what I would probably do is blur both of the alphas slightly because you can see they're very harsh. So you can select one of the rotor nodes and press B which will add a blur node underneath it. And then by turning this slider up you can see it feathers the edges. I'll just add a few pixels on there and I'll also do the same thing on the alpha for the guitar pick. So it's a little bit softer. And there we go, that's one frame of it done. And now the mistake that I think a lot of people make when they start doing visual effects is they assume you now have to go through frame by frame like this and move the roto every time. Not only is this going to take absolutely ages, but it's also a really good way of making your roto really inconsistent. Because if it has a new keyframe every frame, the likelihood is when you play it back in real time, it's going to be going like this. This is usually referred to something like boiling or chattering, and it's basically just where the roto is going mental. So really the best practice is to have as few keyframes as you physically can on the roto. So here's where we let the computer do all of the hard work. As you can see I put a dot on this guitar pick and that's for a very special reason. I'm basically going to track the movement of this and then make the mask follow the track. In an ideal world it would be amazing if the guitar pick was just holding still and then this mask that I've drawn on the first frame would just work for the whole shot. Obviously in this shot the guitar pick is moving so that's not the case at the moment but what we can do is track the way the guitar pick moves around the screen and then stabilize it based on that track. So let's give that a go. If I press tab in the node graph and search for tracker we can add a tracker node. Plug this into the footage then I'm going to hold down control and alt and click on the dot to create a tracker. The tracker in Nuke has two boxes. The internal one is basically the size of the thing you're actually tracking. So I'm going to make this roughly the size of the black dot. And then the second one is basically looking at the area around the thing you're tracking. I'm going to leave it fairly small for this because the guitar pick isn't moving too much. But if what you're tracking is moving quite frantically, you can make this bigger. And this will allow Nuke to look at more pixels around the area of the tracking marker. And then we can start tracking. So you can come up here and press this button, which is the track forward button or the shortcut on the keyboard is V. So if I press V and it's going to start tracking. As you can see it's got about 18 frames in and then stopped. It's pretty unlikely that your tracker will run throughout the whole video unless the thing you're tracking isn't moving very much. This basically just means that Nuke has lost track of where it is. So what you want to do now is go back to where the tracker is still in the correct place which is actually quite far back. It's probably about here. And then you can press this button up here which will clear the tracking data ahead of that frame. And then what we want to do now is try and help the tracker a little bit. So one of the things you can do is make it a bit bigger. Let's see if this works. And that does seem to be doing a pretty good job now. Let's see if it makes it all the way to the end. Okay, so it's got lost again here. It's because it's moving very, very quickly. You can also just move it manually if the computer's getting a bit confused. So this would probably be all right if I just made it a bit bigger. But let's say it couldn't keep up with the tracker. So if I move it a few frames forward, I can literally just move it into place and then step back 
kind of go in between, move it into the right place again. Another thing you can do if the track is struggling is just do one frame at a time. That's this button up here. So if I press this, it will track forward just one frame or the shortcut for that is C. And this is quite useful if you think the track is wandering a bit, you can see much more accurately what it's doing and keep an eye on it more. It looks like it's keeping up pretty well now. So I'm gonna hit V again and track forward. And there we go. It seems to be tracking quite well again now. And I think that'll probably do it. Yeah, there we go. So that's the whole thing tracked. So now that the guitar pick is tracked throughout the entire shot, what I can do is come up to the transform tab in the tracker and change transform from none to stabilize. And if I turn off the overlays by pressing Q a couple of times, you can see that this will now make the guitar pick stay dead in the center of the frame. It's not absolutely perfect because this is just a one point track, so I don't have any rotation or scale, but positionally in X and Y, this should be staying very central now. So if I take a look at the guitar pick roto and we look at it throughout the shot, you can see it stays pretty much on the ball for the whole thing. So now instead of moving the mask for the whole shot, all I really have to do is go through to the points where it needs a bit of a hand and just move it manually. So for example, here it gets a little bit lost. So I can just move this up. Another thing that helped to keep the roto more consistent is not moving one point at a time. So you can see here as I'm going through, I'm selecting big chunks of the roto at the time. So kind of the corners and moving them into place. If I was to start grabbing individual points and moving them in like this, the chances are the silhouette of the rotor shape would be changing over time. I'm going to try and do this fairly real time. You can see the clock in the bottom of my screen here. So you can see if I'm uh, speeding this up too much or not. But this is probably only going to take me two or three minutes at the most because it's quite a simple shot. And there we go. It's a little bit rough because I've just done it in a rush, but as you can see, the rotor shape is now moving nicely with the guitar pick the whole way through. What I then want to do is plug the roto into the tracker node. But now if I look at the roto node and press A, you can see the alpha channel is taken up by the whole of the footage because the alpha channel is coming from here. Whereas if I unplug it, the alpha is just the shape of the roto that we've drawn. So to fix that, what you have to do is turn on replace in the roto node. This will override any alpha coming in from the inputs before, like the footage, and it will just make the alpha the shape of the masks. So that's working well now, but because this mask is stabilized, if I put this back over the original footage, it won't line up because the guitar pick is in a different position. So this is very crudely done, but as you can see, the stabilized one stays in the center. And obviously in the original, the guitar pick was moving all across the frame. So now essentially what we want to do is unstabilize it. So the rotor shape actually starts moving with the original footage again. So to do this, select the tracker node and press control C to copy it. Then I'm gonna select the roto node and press control V, which will paste it underneath. And then all we had to do to invert the stabilization is go back to the transform controls and change this to match move instead of stabilize. And now what this is going to do is apply the original movement of the tracker onto the rotor shape and it's going to move with the original footage and actually what i want to do is put this underneath the rotor of the fingers otherwise the fingers won't be moving so to disconnect this node you can select it and press Control shift x which will pop it out of the stream and then i can plug it in at the bottom like this and now you can see that those finger shapes are actually moving with the guitar pick so now i have this isolated i can do whatever i want to it so i can make it purple for example and then i can merge this back over the original footage and it will look something like this. At the moment, the roto node has no motion blur on it and it's really, really sharp like this, even when it should be blurred from the movement. So what you can do in the tracker node is turn the motion blur up from zero to one like this. Changing the shutter will change how much motion blur you actually see. So if I turn this down a little bit, that should be more accurate. And also you can see when I turn on the motion blur, it looks like it's shifting to the right a little bit. What you can do is change the shutter offset to centered. That just changes the way Nuke calculates the motion blur. I usually find that centered is the best and most accurate one. And now that's pretty much it. You can see the guitar pick is roto throughout the entire shot. And the actual number of keyframes I've had to add here for the roto is a lot less than it would be if I was going through frame by frame and doing it. So there we go. That's the basics of rotoscoping in Nuke. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to check out the other videos in this playlist and I'll see you soon.